Hello and welcome. I've recently released my third Timberborn time-lapse video and as I've done with the previous two, we're going to have a small walkthrough video today. We will be looking at the water and power distribution, the industrial area, the housing district and the overall design. Now let's start with my initial idea and how we ended up with the final design. After the Iron Teeth Archibald Cenotaph, it was time to return to the folktales. Initially, I had the idea to make a monastery-like structure halfway constructed into a cliffside. However, when I started playing around in developer mode, I changed the idea to be more of a castle-like setup. An outer area where the normal folks live and an inner part for the elite few. Here we see some designs I created prior to starting the actual playthrough. An important part of my time-lapse videos, or better yet, my timberboard mega builds, is form over function. You probably recognize some of these designs, albeit a bit different. The walls, the tribute, the nice hole in the ground, all ended up in some form in the final build. The reason I run the game in a custom difficulty with less severe droughts and less harsh nourishment settings is to make it quicker to create these time lapses. Let's be fair, constructing a bunch of buildings just for survival is only fun to watch for so long during a time lapse. Plus, it would take me twice as long to finish these videos. This map with the designs was the original map I picked for the time-lapse build, but I quickly came to the conclusion that it would be too much terraforming to make the build fit in this map. So I went on a quest and ended up with the final map, Elendil Basin. The reason I picked this map is because of the flatness and the starting point being pretty much centered. There is also a bunch of forest, which is very useful if we are placing down a ton of levees for walls. Now let's check out the final build. Right after we got the initial district production started, it was time to start with the outer walls and the harbor area. The furthest away from the eventual inner city, but still within the walls, got reserves for farming. I wanted to make sure that all the different food types were represented in this part. So here we have carrots, potatoes, sunflowers, wheat and the aquatic farms right next to it. In the area with the forester, we have all the different tree types except for birches. There is also the berries and dandelions, just in range so the forester could place them initially. We also added some maple forest near the inner city as our grills requires logs to operate. In order to have all these lovely fields stay green and fertile, the paths throughout and surrounding the build are all created on top of waterways. These waterways in turn have power connections traveling all over the place. The power is produced by the windmill areas. These large windmills can be lowered two levels deep into the water. There is no loss of power here as height doesn't influence wind speed. The excess power is stored in the inner city battery park. They lower in between the two wall segments so we can hide the stone baskets a bit. The connection to the power grid is made from these shafts and the buildings here. The power network also connects up through this fancy spaghetti to the tribute of ingenuity. And also through a bit of finagling and a warehouse to the observatories. We of course also have to power our mud baths and a murder go rounds. Excuse me, the carousels. For the living quarters and the industrial areas, we dug some holes and we went from there. We have way more housing than we can support, so tons of them have been paused ever since they were built. The lower inner part of the living quarters, as well as the lower levels of the industrial area, are mostly used for storage. The industrial area, however, also has rooms for the golem part factories. Mirroring all of this, while still being mostly connected to the one district center, was a bit of a nightmare. There were some refactors between the initial setup and the final design, both of which can be seen in the time lapse for the keen eye. The inner city was the final part of the build to get created. The idea of having a temple in the rounded back area was the original concept, and having the pit in the middle was also part of the original design I showed earlier. I especially like how these housing walls have turned out with the little row of trees in front of them. All in all, I spent quite a bit of time prettifying the whole build to make it all look as good as possible. As you might expect from me, I really hope they introduce more decorations like half roofs and different color shrubbery. I hope this little walkthrough gave you a decent idea of what's going on underneath the final design 
And I also hope my time-lapse videos give you a bit of inspiration on creating mega builds of your own. That's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. In case you aren't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I also stream on Twitch and we have a Discord server. Both of those links are in the description. Feel free to drop by and say hi. Thank you all for watching. I will be back soon. Bye for now.